strongly support SB 876. I'm Bilal Mufundi Ali. I'm an organizer with the Coalition on Homelessness, and I support the bill, S 76. Hi, my name is Kathleen Williams. I'm a civil rights attorney, part of the Sacramento Homeless Organizing Committee and Safe Ground Sacramento. We can't wait for the housing. We are in crisis. We implore you to act. Suzanne Hastings, I occupy Sacramento and I support this bill. Hi, my name is Angela Upshaw. I'm a public health educator with the local health department and I am a former health um, healthcare coordinator with the supportive services for veteran families and I support this bill. Hi everyone, my name is Lovepreet, fourth year psychology student at UC Davis and we support this bill. My name is Raquel, I'm a UC student at UC Irvine and I support this bill. My name is Gloria Sandoval. I am the president of the California Central Valley Journey for Justice, and we support SB 876. Thank uh, Senator Du. And uh, when Senator Canella comes back, could you tell him we're still waiting for his appointment? Thank you. Oh. Hello, my name is Hannah. <laughs> I'm Josh Epstein, second year law student at Berkeley. Hi, I'm Sasha Feldstein. I'm a second year MPP student at the Goldman School of Public Policy. And together, we are here on behalf of the Law School's Policy Advocacy Clinic, which wholeheartedly supports this bill. My name is Paul Bowden with the Western Regional Advocacy Project, and houseless people didn't create homelessness in America, so we shouldn't be going to jail because it exists. I support this bill. My name is Carol Moss, and I'm with the Health and Human Services Coalition, and I support this bill. I'm Dr. Samuel Weeks, Alameda County Healthcare for the Homeless Program, Consumer Advisory Board, and I urge you to vote yes on this bill. Mr. Chair and members, Kevin Baker with the American Civil Liberties Union. We think this is a reasonable bill to deal with the substantial problems. Support. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kia Singer. I'm a Lutheran volunteer, and I also work at the Homeless Advocacy Project at the Justice and Diversity Center of San Francisco, and I support this bill. Hi, my name is Aubrey Dimler. I'm a Vincentian Service Corps volunteer, and I support this bill. Hello, my name is Colin Arrett. I'm a Vincentian Service Corps volunteer as well, and I support this bill. Okay. Um, there's no other witnesses. Uh, we can perhaps have discussion of the committee. Is there questions there for a senator? Or, or, oh yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask if, if anybody at this time had any questions for Senator Liu, first of all, before we go to opposition. Is there any? Okay, so we'll go to the opposition, please. And uh, we have the, the speakers opposing this bill come forward. Um, like the previous group, uh, we're gonna hear from, we agreed to have two speakers, uh, with uh, other people indicating their support. So we'll have the two speakers, please. Can welcome, come on forward, please. We agreed to have the two speakers and uh, thank you. So, Mr. Mayor, you, you, you are uh, the lead? I am the lead, sir. Okay, you I'm Mayor Joe Gunter, the mayor of the city of Salinas, a town of 159,000 people. We oppose this measure for the following reasons. We feel that it takes away the city's rights to be effectively provide public health and safety and in public space. It is held open to the public, but not limited to plazas, courtyards, parking lights, sidewalks, public transportation, public buildings, shopping centers. And we believe it's our right and, our, and what we should be doing is providing public health and safety and to take care of the welfare of our community. We do not believe that this measure will have any positive impact on chronic homelessness. But what we do need is, we need the resources to do more for shelters, housing beds, social services, mental health, job training, education, counseling, et cetera. Kitty, cities and counties need more tools, funding, and flexibility to provide the proven services. Between 2013 and 2016, the city of Salinas has spent $1.6 million providing warming shelters. We've improved health services. 
and we've taken health and safety cleanups very personal in our city. Some of the things we have done that work, we have purchased property that was for sale. We have rented buildings that we have turned into service centers where we currently have four social workers that are providing counseling. We've made arrangements for the Fort Ord Transition, Veterans Transition Center to pick up veterans and to take them off of our Soledad Street and our lower areas where these folks were unable to get services. And we have stepped up and done this. And we believe that every city and every county should be doing this independent without restrictions from any new laws that will keep us from providing services. We don't believe that having people sleep on the sidewalks will get them better. We've approached our mental health services. We brought in counselors. We've worked with the university, the Cal State University Monterey Bay has opened up a service center where they are training social workers under the guidance of certified counselors that are working with these folks and getting them jobs. We've reached out and taken children off the streets and placed them into shelters and homes. Within the last two weeks, we've provided an additional 100 beds for homeless people to take them off the streets so they don't have to sleep with no dignity or respect on the sidewalk. So we are doing this and do not believe that this bill would be advantageous to us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next witness, please. Good afternoon, Chairman and members of the Commission. My name is Marco Martinez. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today about SB 876 and the practical effects it will have on local governments. I speak to you from a place of experience on how local governments are working both to address the impacts of homelessness in their communities and improve the lives of the homeless. I currently serve as the city attorney for the city of Azusa and the assistant city attorney for the city of Colton. Both cities have, uh, like Salinas, invested significant resources to assist the homeless in their cities, and both cities have learned that developing personal relationships with the city's homeless population and assisting them in getting the resources they need works far better than any enforcement program. No matter the approach, however, SB 876 does nothing to assist cities in addressing homelessness. Instead, this bill grants preferential treatment to one class of residents and converts large swaths of public and private spaces into potential areas for homeless encampments, depriving the vast majority of the general public from using these areas as, the, as they were really intended. More concerning is that SB 876 will expose our California cities to lawsuits, court fines, and attorney's fees for honest interpretations of its ambiguous and broad provisions. Its passage increases the likelihood that cities will be dealing with conflicts between the homeless and other citizens over the use of both public and private property. For these reasons, we believe enacting this bill actually hinders the efforts of local government to address the problem of homelessness. As I mentioned, uh, one of the problems with the bill is that the, definition, the, def the definitions are ambiguous and broad. For example, the definition of homeless person requires cities to either presume that a person is homeless or ask intrusive questions to ascer ascertain their condition and purpose for using public spaces. More troubling is the definition of public space. The current definition elevates the condition of homelessness to one that is granted preferential treatment in the use of public spaces to the exclusion of the very people those spaces were really designed for. While the definition was recently amended to exclude public property that is otherwise closed to the public or when a fee is required for entry or use, the definition still leaves significant public areas open to inconsistent and conflicting uses. Parks, sidewalks, walking paths, waiting rooms, and lobbies all appear to be available for resting and camping activities, even though these spaces were designed for entirely different purposes. Since the bill includes no durational limits, it is not clear how long these activities can last. One of the most troubling aspects of the bill is that the definition of public space appears to include purely private areas as well. There are occasions when local agencies obtain public easements over purely private property. These easements are used for emergency access, for sidewalks, for open space maintenance, for utility and other purposes, and they are available for the public as well. Because a local agency owns an easement across these private areas, SB 876 appears to convert these areas into public spaces for resting and camping purposes as well. In addition, the exemption from prosecution for violation of Penal Code 647 means that any homeless person can lodge in any public or private building without having that law enforced against them. Finally, SB 876 promotes the use of public spaces in ways that they were really not intended. Although encampments and storage in areas that are not designed for such uh, intense uses add stress 
uh, allowing encampments and, and storage in areas that are not designed for such intense uses adds stress to public infrastructure and cities will need to increase their cleaning and maintenance programs to protect public health in these areas. We recognize that this measure is well intentioned and there is much more work to be done. Uh, of course, cities have a very important role to play in these efforts. However, cities and other local agencies need more funding and flexibility to provide the shelters, the housing, and create innovative programs and services that are proven to really benefit the homeless. Unfortunately, my fear is that SB 876 will detract from these efforts. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, please, other, other speakers in favor of the, just indicate your position and your position. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Bill and members of the committee. Rudy Escalante on behalf of the California Police Chiefs Association, and we too oppose SB 876. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, other witnesses opposed, please. Mr. Chair and members, Kendra Harris, legislative representative with the League of California Cities, representing 475 cities in California. We are in strong opposition to this measure. We believe this bill does nothing to actually end homelessness and our cities, as previously stated, need support and funding for affordable housing and other supportive programs. And we opposing legislation that takes away local authority. Thank you. Chairman Bell, David Spence, uh, Mayor of La Cunada Flint Ridge. Carol Liu and I started our career together in 1992 and we hardly ever have opposed any bills that she has brought before this astute body. But unfortunately, my city council has set me up here to strongly oppose this bill. Tony and Kathleen, you know that contract cities are gonna have a hard time supporting this bill because it takes local control out of the hands of our cities. Okay, thank you. Thank you for hearing me. Jonathan Clay, uh, you can pull. I don't think it's going to work. Jonathan Clay on behalf of the city of Encinitas in opposition. Okay. Johan Clay is representing the city of Ontario opposed to this measure, but as an alternative, the city is working with Senator DeLeon to support his No Place Like Home uh, budget initiative. Thank you. Catherine Brandenburg with Brownseed High at Farber and Shrek. On behalf of the city of Alameda, we oppose the bill. Sylvia Solith Shaw on behalf of the city of Santa Monica. Our council recently reaffirmed its commitment on our action plan to end homelessness. We are pouring resources into uh, medical and behavioral health treatment teams, preventing um, older uh, residents from being evicted. Um, and we are also working with LA County on their homelessness initiative. Uh, we uh, must um, oppose this measure we, as we believe it preempts local authority and will uh, hurt our local efforts. Thank you. Jordan Ellison on behalf of the cities of Temecula and El Cajon in opposition to the bill. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Michael Alt with the Downtown Sacramento Partnership here in Sacramento and also more importantly, on behalf of the California Downtown Association representing downtowns throughout the state. We are strongly opposed to this bill. We think it provides zero solutions for homelessness and will absolutely impact our ability to work with the homeless population. Good afternoon, Alex Saab, Mayor of the City of Downey. We are in opposition to this bill. We feel it does not provide uh, any resources to the homeless situation, and it also hinders the law enforcement ability to, uh, to work uh, hand in hand with the homeless population. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Paul Gonzalez representing the cities of Azusa, Bellflower, La Mirada, Lakewood, Norwalk, Pomona, Torrance, and 12 other cities. They are opposed to this bill. All of my clients are working closely with the counties on ways to cure homelessness in their cities, and uh, really it boils down to resources, so thank you. <laughs> Marvin Pineda with the city of Alhambra in opposition. Lauren De Valencia representing the American Planning Association in opposition. Christy Foy on behalf of the city of Long Beach in opposition. Thank you. Good afternoon, Jan Arbuckle, council member, city of Grass Valley uh, in opposition of SB 876. What we need are more resources and less constraints on, lo on local control. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, Martin Scheel, council member, former mayor of the city of Lakeport, uh, president of the Redwood Empire Division of the League of California Cities. I'm here representing those entities, uh, expressing our opinion that this is not the solution to homelessness uh, in California, especially our rural communities. With that being said, uh, we would encourage you to oppose SB 876. Thank you. Good afternoon, Steve Cruz on behalf of Sacramento County. We understand the bill is well intended, but as others had testified, we're concerned about the bill's infringement on our ability to carry out our local programs and protect uh, health and, and public safety in our communities. Thank you. Hello, Dwayne Hodge, Cathedral City Police Department. I'm the homeless liaison officer within our city, and our city opposes this bill. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Michelle Smyra Bratmiller. I'm here today representing the Watt Avenue Partnership, the Greater Broadway District, and the R Street Sacramento Partnership. Three PBIZs that represent collectively over 500 property owners and over 800 business owners. And all three boards have unanimously opposed this legislation. Good afternoon, Senators. Karen Flood with the Union Square Business Improvement District in San Francisco, also a member of the uh, Coalition of Businesses in San Francisco, including the Chamber of Commerce, SF Travel, the Hotel Council, and others who have been working very closely with our mayor and a couple of our Congress folks to really find real solutions to this issue. We need resources and we need the tools to keep our public spaces open and welcome and safe for everyone. Thank you. Good afternoon, Senators. I'm Chip with the Downtown Association in Santa Cruz, and we remain committed to work with our county, city, and service providers to uh, address the complex issues relating to homelessness with the goal of ending homelessness in our communities, but we cannot support this legislation. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Senators. My name is Alexandra Sibyl, Policy Analyst for the Downtown Association of Santa Cruz in opposition. Amy Brown on behalf of the City of Riverside in opposition. Michael Murphy on behalf of the city of Santa Clarita in opposition. Laura Kuhn, a city manager for the city of Vacaville. Thank you for your public service. As a public servant myself, we strongly oppose this bill. We want to work with you on programs to end the inhumanity of homelessness. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. Corey Salzillo on behalf of the California State Sheriff's Association in opposition. Good afternoon, Chris Concepcion, Fire Chief of the City of Vacaville, I also chair of the uh, city's uh, neighborhood team and part of our mission is helping uh, the homeless in the city. Um, 876 is not the solution, so we oppose this bill. Good afternoon, Jim Goodhart, uh, council member and former mayor of the city of Palos Verdes Estates. We are in uh, opposition to this bill, thank you. Jeannie Whitehouse, I'm a Vacaville business owner and I'm also on the board of directors for the Vacaville Business Improvement District and I strongly am in opposition of the bill um, because I think that it violates my rights as a business owner to provide a clean and safe environment for my customers. Kathleen Ramos, I'm president of the Business Improvement District for Vacaville. We stand in opposition. Um, we don't think this is a solution. We do really encourage you to take a look at some of the success stories in communities and grow on those. Those are better solutions. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Jennifer Brewer on behalf of the California Chamber of Commerce in opposition. Mr. Chair, members, Chris McKaylee on behalf of the Civil Justice Association of California in opposition. Mr. Chair, members, David Jones on behalf of the cities of Marin County, uh, city of Murrieta, and the city of San Marcos in opposition. Hello, my name is Wendy Jackson. I'm a business owner, registered nurse, and a resident of Vacaville, and I strongly oppose this bill. Hello, I'm Emily Halkin on behalf of the city of Sacramento, and we're in opposition. Thank you. Bob Vollmer, Executive Director of the Downtown Vacaville Business Improvement District, representing over 400 businesses. We oppose this measure. We believe there are resources out there that could be uh, put to a better direction. We have a wonderful homeless roundtable committee in the city, and it's doing wonders for our community. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members, Matthew Hargo with the California Business Properties Association in opposition. Hi, my name is John Carley, Chief of Police with the City of Vacaville and also the Chair of our Homeless Roundtable. I can assure you that at the local level throughout the state, there are many, many solutions other than one in front of you today, and I strongly oppose this. Thank you. 
My name is Len Augustine. I'm the mayor of the city of Vacaville. Uh, we provide quite a few services for the homeless now. We have uh, uh, partnered with uh, faith-based or, faith organizations to provide transportation to homeless shelter throughout the city. But uh, we are concerned about the consequences of this uh, bill, which may uh, cause us to restrict those uh, enforcements of current city ordinances. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Dave Butler, Vice Mayor of the City of Rockland, also board member with the Sacramento Valley Division of the California League of Cities, um, rising opposition. Mr. Chairman, members, Ron Lawrence, Police Chief of the City of Rockland, also representing the uh, California Police Chiefs Association and the Placer County Law Enforcement Executives in opposition of this bill. Thank you. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Daryl Pyle, City Manager, City of Hanford, in opposition to this bill. Thank you. I don't see any other speakers. Um, we have committee discussion on the bill. Um, um, perhaps, Senator Liu, you can respond to some of the concerns in opposition, if you care to. Well, they are... Um Several folks that were opposed are opposed to the bill um, indicated that it affected private properties or businesses, et cetera. The bill does not address those issues. And it just talks about public, public spaces, public owned spaces. So the bill does not um, address those issues. And I'm sorry, I didn't take uh, other notes, but if you have questions, I'm happy to try to answer those. I think one other one was... Um exposing cities to further lawsuits. The lawsuit issue, I think, was one liability, legal lawsuits was a concern. Well, there is, a, there is an opportunity for I'm those just listing, I got a little note here that if you didn't take notes, I had a couple, maybe some of the other committee members did, but I think that was raised. Uh, yes, it was, yes. Well, I, we did hear it at one time, yes, that um, those folks who feel that uh, their rights have been violated, like any other civil action, can, uh, quote, sue. But whether or not that's a, a reality is something else, but that is allowed in the bill. And then the other one was the definition of what a homeless person is. There was a concern about that issue. I think the definition of a homeless person, I think well, somebody raised I, you know, that issue, I think. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to take that uh, question. Okay. Um, there was a comment that the bill would require uh, police officials um, and people enforcing city laws to identify who is homeless and who is not. In fact, it does the opposite. It says to treat everybody the same in public space as it pertains to rest, to sharing of food, or practicing religion. It does the opposite. It says if the law is intended and applied to apply to everybody, the person camping because they have no home and cannot avoid breaking the law because they can't afford a home, equal to the person camping because they're waiting for the iPhone to come out or the new IMAX show of Star Wars. If we, if we agree to treat everybody equally, then there could be a, a provision that the city would have to say nobody can sleep on this street whether or not they're here to purchase an iPhone or they're here because they can't afford a place to live. And, and so the, the bill actually does the opposite. It would relieve the city officials and the police from having to decide, does this person camp here because they have no place to be or is it because the Star Wars movie is coming out tomorrow? Uh, all right. Um, Sarah Lou, do you have any other um comments would you like to make and other committee questions, if any? <clears throat> Senator Gaines has some questions. Really more comments, if I could. Yes, please. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Senator Liu for bringing legislation forward because um, clearly we have agreement that we have a problem with homelessness in California and we've got to figure out a way to address it and to date, we probably haven't done that adequately. Um, but speaking from my district, and I've got, we had uh, Chief Ron Lawrence from Rockland and Vice Mayor uh, Dave Butler from Rockland uh, come and speak. And we have programs in my Senate district that address homelessness. And it, 
based on this testimony, I've heard this from other communities too, but I'll speak to my own in my own district. Uh, we have two programs. Uh, one is called Acres of Hope, uh, which is some, uh, a group that I support and my church supports, uh, open to anybody that wants to go through the program. Uh, that's a you know, homeless mother with children. And it takes them through a program to try to address their needs, whether it's drug addiction or alcoholism or um, uh, maybe uh, abuse by uh, a former uh, an ex-husband or a boyfriend. And it's been a very successful program and we continue to support that program and uh, we're seeing great success in terms of providing a solution for someone that's in a homeless situation and actually getting them out. Uh, there's another program called The Gathering In, which I've uh, supported in my community that is trying to resolve this issue. I, I think you've got to figure out how, how do you get um, people in a stable environment where they have a roof over their heads and resolve that problem. My concern with the legislation, and you can speak to this, but um, I'm very concerned that we're, we could be exacerbating the problem because I, in my view, you've got to figure out how to get individuals in a program that provides an ultimate stable home and give them the services that they need so that they can live a productive life. And I'm not, I'm not clear on how that's being addressed in your legislation. And at this point, I'm in opposition to it, but I'm willing to hear uh, your testimony. Actually, the bill is really very simple. It just speaks to the criminalization of being a homeless. And what we desire is that, you know, let me just say, law enforcement perhaps is the wrong way to approach homelessness. You talk about programs, you talk about the nonprofits, the churches, um, everybody on councils, et cetera, working together. Now that's where the problem solving should begin. But treating people like they're criminals just because they're homeless is not a solution to the problem. In fact, it's more expensive to do it that way. There's, you know, you have their booking fees and all this other kind of stuff that you accumulate when you put somebody in jail. It exacerbates the problem when you have then a record. Then how do you come out and get services? Because you're not then eligible. So the bill simply is something to, for all of us to think about in a, in a constructive manner because we're not trying to deny cities the right or, or um, we're not speaking to what the cities can or cannot do. We do not interfere with that. The bills, if a homeless person is committing a crime, the police can certainly arrest that person and, and have and that person have their due process. That's not what we're doing here. But we're saying or suggesting that we all agree this is a problem. We just don't agree about how, and we all have steps in our communities of success and failures, quite frankly. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many people on the streets. So, you know, it's, so it's, this is a small, this is just an insy bitsy piece of this. Does not provide resources to solve the problem. But it's another way to take a look at, are we getting anywhere because we have to arrest somebody and put them in jail before they get services? I mean, the carrot stick with Santa Monica. Yeah, I gotta arrest them because then I, then I can evaluate them and then I find out you know, what they can do or not do. But isn't there another way of, of doing this? So, I mean, that's the question that we're trying to ask here. And, um, you know, it's a very sticky question. This has been going on for a long time and the problem is getting bigger, not smaller, despite all the individual efforts of our individual communities. So is it a city thing or is it a state problem? It's a national problem. So, you know, I th you know we're trying and I, what I have are good willing people everywhere understanding that this is an issue. Nobody wants a homeless person in their backyard, so to speak. But how to address it and how do we meet collectively as a society trying to deal with this issue? And this is a very, as I say, a very small part of that in terms of 
criminalizing somebody, putting more penalties on somebody, creating more poor people, not being able to solve the problem. That's all. This is a very simple bill. It's much narrower than it was last year. because so I thought we'd listen to some of your concerns. But, you know, we're not taking any rights away from the cities. No rights away from the cities. They function as they, as they do. 